Hi, ladies and gentlemen, many thanks for staying with us. Uh, welcome back from break with me. Uh, we're great to have Alan, who is from uh, one of our sponsors, VIA Access Orca. Um, yes, yeah, so due to traveling restrictions, he's not able to join us in person, so he's with us uh, virtually. So, um, Alan, while waiting for everyone to come in, would you like to start introducing yourself? Yes, sure. So, um, hello, everybody. I, you, can you hear me well? Can you hear me well? Yep, we can hear you very well from okay. here. Okay, so hello, everybody. I'm Alan Oshimovsky. I'm the CTO of uh, Vaxis Orca. Um, <clears throat> as was uh, just mentioned, so I'm, um, I'm um, very glad to be with you and to uh, share with you some of uh, our insights uh, with regards uh, to uh, OTIT convergence in the, in the uh, when it comes to industry 4.0 and, uh, and the security aspect of it, of this convergence. I'm very sorry uh, not to be with you physically present in London. Um, uh, as was uh, just said, uh, the, uh, the COVID crisis introduces uh, some level of uh, unpredictability in our uh, travel arrangements. So uh, I'd say that I, I, I do my best to uh, to entertain and to um, and, and, and share these insights um, uh, from remote remote location. I'm currently based uh, north of Tel Aviv, uh, <clears throat> and um, uh, I'll hope that uh, um, that will be interesting enough. Uh, I have to acknowledge that's the first time I participate in such a hybrid format when I'm a virtual participant and uh, people physically present. So I hope um, everything's going to be clear and, uh, and, and interesting for you. Um, <clears throat> so before, can you see my, my, my second screen? Can you see uh, the screen starting with 20 years, 20 years of experience? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So before jumping into um, the very topic um, I'm going to talk about, uh, let me just say a word maybe about uh, my company, Vaxis Orca. Um, <clears throat> very few words, just to say that we've been in the business of uh, protecting uh, digital assets across supply chains for the past, for more than 20 years. Um, we are historically coming from the video, the TV business, okay? Uh, those, uh, those digital assets are very high value and they, they require very high level of security protect, of content protection. So this is where it started to come from. And this, um, this legitimacy that we build, this knowledge that we build, we apply to other verticals and uh, smart manufacturing is definitely one of the most exciting one. I just want to mention that we are part of a big group, the Orange Group, uh, one of the biggest uh, European telco. We are fully in subsidiary of Orange and uh, um, through their uh, uh, enterprise arm, Orange Business Services, we are um, um, beginning, I mean, we're, we're supporting a number of, of, um, of industrial players uh, with our range of uh, products and solutions. As I mentioned, our um, um, legacy or historic know-how revolves around um, video or media content protection, but that builds on two key pillars. Um, on the one hand, security, embedding and online security. Our uh, solutions, uh, they, they bear the scars of uh, decades of fights against, uh, against piracy and, uh, and hacking. Uh, and um, uh, not less important, when we discuss about the industry for the two and ITOT conversions, the, uh, what pertains to uh, data analytics, okay? There as well, we have a, a range of product and solution that we deploy. Um, <clears throat> and with that, I suggest we jump into our topic, okay? Um, what's um, one of the key aspects of the industry 4.0 revolution is uh, the conversions uh, between OT and IT. OT it stands for operation technology before we, um, we delve deeper into uh, this conversion, maybe let's, let's take a minute back to, to, to go back to the basics. What are we talking about? Okay, operational technology um, typically refers to um, the, the range of technologies and software and hardware that enable uh, vertical or industrial know-how, okay? It deals with monitoring, automating, and controlling. Okay, and the, uh, the, the, the systems that, 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 that it refers to uh, are built around mainly the machines and the manufacturing processes, okay? 
And when you do um, security designs around those systems, you have to identify the value, the key assets that you want to protect. In the OT world, the key assets are um, availability um, and, and, and the ability to operate in real time and with low latency, depending on the case. And of course, safety. Those are the key things that you want to protect. Imagine what um, an operational outage may cause to an industrial player. It may have the dramatic effect. Um, so this is typically where you want to invest your security designs. Uh, I want to mention as well that in, uh, in, in, in the OT world, um, life expectancy of the equipment has, has an importance. We'll, we'll talk about that later in the presentation. But we're discussing um, um, life expectancy of uh, machines that is typically north of 15 years. Okay, That's for the OT world. Moving to the IT, the information technology world. Um, it, it, it clearly appears that these systems uh, is designed with other other constraints, okay? Because here, what we want to enable is the supply chain. This version that becomes more and more distributed in a connected world, okay? Um, the, uh, the, the, the key principles around these technologies is about interoperability and standards, okay? Because what we manage is the flow of data. And the systems are designs around network nodes, data producers, if you want. Okay. And in such systems, the security needs to invest, that you need to invest, the security designs needs to revolve around the value you want to protect, which is mainly, which is mainly data integrity, data confidentiality. Okay. You want to avoid data theft, data leaks, or data corruption. Okay. We're dealing here with systems where the uh, life expectancy of equipment is uh, significantly. Uh, lower, lower. We're discussing about out of magnitude, typically of five years, let's say. Okay, so this is for uh, setting the stage. What is OT? What is IT? Okay. On the one hand, you have vertical know-hows that are enabled through automation and control. On the other hand, you have more about horizontal um, um, enablers, technology enablers. Okay, that manage the flow of data. And when you do security design, you want to make sure that you the security designs of those two different worlds of the different set of technologies okay are have been traditionally done in the ancient paradigm okay um in a, in a very silo mode where uh, on the one hand you would uh, make sure that you protect your system from operational outage or safety risks and on the other end you would protect the system from data leaks and data corruption now the interesting um part of the story um begins when we are merging those two worlds, when we are uh, realizing this convergence between the OT world and the IT, IT world, okay? Because that, um, in, uh, in our jargon, <laughs> is a typical case of uh, an extension of the surface of attack, okay? Um, you may find now uh, new attack vectors that were unknown before, um, uh, and, and, and actually, uh, this interconnection between both worlds, which is not thought uh, uh, right from the beginning, may introduce a number of security holes. Okay. <clears throat> um, I guess you all understand what I'm referring to because you all uh, saw in the press the, the most uh, publicized uh, attacks um, um, that somehow relate to this uh, OTIT conversion, starting from the Stuxnet. Uh, a story a few years ago, and more recently, the Colonial Pipeline in the US story. So every one of us have seen that in the press. But when you um, uh, look at uh, each, um, I mean, more at the more, uh, I'd say, uh, 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 precise level uh, in terms of uh, each and every uh, uh, industrial in his, in, his, in his realm, you see that, that, that they face a very complex situation. Okay, so I'm just um, uh, taking here figures that I found in the latest Fortinet report about the operational technology and cybersecurity uh, uh, landscape. Um, and it shows a very interesting, uh, frightening <laughs> uh, 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 facts, okay? On the, on the one hand, um, you see um, uh, uh, not only an increase in the number of systems that are being attacked, okay? More systems are being attacked year to year between uh, 2019 to 2020, okay? And, and, but you also see that uh, many more attacks on the systems, okay? So more systems being attacked and more attacks in, 
for on, on each of the systems okay i have bad news because that trend is uh, unfortunately uh, not going to stop here okay um not less interesting is what you see on the right side of my screen which is um the um, kind of qualification of those attacks how do they impact the organization okay um i'd say the uh, the, the, the the top um of those um uh, you know um, uh, of this uh, of, of this uh, list relate to uh, more to ot kind of attacks that have uh, an impact on uh, operational outage okay of course the brand awareness degradation is also a very significant part of that um the bottom part of that is uh, more concerns the it uh, uh, the IT uh, world kind of attack that relate to data, um, loss of IP, loss of data, um, and 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 you see that year to year again uh, we are uh, witnessing a very um, um, you know um, significant and continuous um, unfortunately uh, increase in those attacks. I think what we're going to see moving forward are more sophisticated attacks. Okay, and I want to illustrate that uh, with um, with some example or. Of some cases that we see concretely on the uh, uh, additive manufacturing world and the 3D printing world, um, uh, we at VO have, um, uh, have a lot of activity those days in, the, in this uh, in this area in uh, additive manufacturing and adapting our solution to this world. Um, and I think AM 3D printing presents a very interesting, um, um, I'd say, a, a showcase for this uh, the problems with OTIT conversions for a number of reasons. The first one is that. Um, because you don't have the same level of legacy in the systems. It's a newer system, if you want. And those systems include um, uh, uh, quite a lot of software um, um, in, 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 you know, in the machines. There are lots of software, but uh, sometimes as well, uh, connectivity, uh, machines that are connected to the internet. Okay, And when the, the machine becomes itself a software, or when the factory becomes itself a software, you know, this is where you see uh, the new vectors of attacks and, and 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 the new holes in the security designs. Okay, so um, <clears throat> if I try to um, share with you some of the um, the blind spots that you may see um, uh, in specifically in the uh, AM or the 3D printing world, okay, I think that uh, that that will give you uh, an idea of where what what we need to do something what what the industry needs to do to avoid those things. Okay, so let's start with a very uh, basic one understandable one okay um uh, you have in the in the am world you have this uh this uh, file design this uh, uh or uh, manufacturing parameter files that are uh, basically that circulate throughout the supply chain and that contains all the intellectual property that allows at the end of the day a machine to print uh the objects okay um <clears throat> so the very uh, first attack that, I that industrial players want to protect themselves from is um, uh, the theft of this know-how, okay? If uh, you have uh, a critical know-how in, uh, in these manufacturing parameters uh, that are supposed to feed the, the machine, you don't want those know-how to be uh, stolen by a uh, sub party and, and, and result in uh, uh, non-authorized, unauthorized uh, printings, okay? So, so that, that's the first kind of, a, of thing that you see uh, coming in terms of attacks here. The second threat, which is a little bit more sophisticated, okay, but uh, <clears throat> not less, uh, and so uh, I think even more frightening, uh, uh, with with uh, would consist basically into uh, in in, in uh, corrupting some of the manufacturing parameters of the design file, okay, um, but doing it purposely so that you can sabotage uh, the 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 part at the end of the you know the chain, you know. So imagine we're in the automotive or uh, aeronautics, which are already strong um, adopters of uh, 3D printing. So um, changing, corrupting some of these uh, parameters in the file may result at the end of the day in some very dramatic consequences, you know, of pieces of planes, of pieces of cars uh, that are malfunctioning, okay? So that is a very uh, um, sophisticated uh, way to attack the system. Yet even more sophisticating, I would say, if you <laughs> another kind of attack uh, would consist to use uh, in, in using basically this file, okay, CAM or CAT file that uh, that uh, that uh, basically uh, captures all these uh, uh, manufacturing parameters and and use them as a vector um, to convey basically malwares. Okay, imagine that you introduce into a factory uh, those files. 
uh, if you don't apply the, the appropriate level of protections, okay, you know, very uh, often we're talking XML files, you know. So um, a malevolent player can uh, purposely introduce some, I don't know, ransomware, ransomware. So that can have as well very dramatic uh, uh, consequences on the cloud. Um, and, and, and if you believe that those uh, examples are, uh, let's say, come out of my imagination as a, you know, coming from the security world, um, I guess what you need to do is maybe uh, read the press and just sharing two stories that uh, came to my mind when I prepared this presentation. The first one on the, uh, um, uh, pertains to um, some, uh, some of the things that uh, Israeli researchers did a couple of years ago um, with, uh, from uh, Ben Gurion University. Uh, they uh, they used a, a, a CAM file, you know, this file that uh, comprises the, the industrial manufacturing parameters to sabotage a drone. Okay, so they wanted to 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 to, to prove their point. Uh, um, the same um, same thing could theoretically be applied by a malevolent player, not to sabotage only drone, um, but think plane, think think car, think any other vehicle. Okay, that can have dramatic effect. The other example I'm sharing with you is a little bit more recent. It's something that, uh, that, 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 that happened at the beginning of the COVID crisis. Um, <clears throat> um, you know, it, Italy was uh, stricken very badly, uh, as you remember, uh, one of the first countries to be uh, very, uh, very strongly stricken by, by, uh, by the COVID, you know, and they had, they had this, uh, this uh, equipment uh, that they needed to replace in hospitals. Uh, if I remember well, we, dis we were discussing at that time about 10,000 uh, US dollar, uh, each unit of this equipment, they couldn't get replacement for that equipment. So um, in, a, in a very, uh, let's say, uh, a dramatic uh, uh, act from an Italian uh, uh, guy was to volunteer uh, the design of that equipment. And uh, at the end of the day, the uh, hospitals managed to produce those um, uh, critical equipment for a couple of bucks. <clears throat> so in that particular case, uh, they save life, everything is fine, everybody uh, is happy, but the very same story could happen, uh, not in the same context, with malevolent player that could just steal uh, the intellectual property and the know-how of companies to produce uh, unauthorized parts, okay, and that will translate into a, a very bad loss, economic loss for any company that has invested, uh, you know, big money into building this industrial know-how. Okay, so 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 it's not theoretical cases. So the point I want to make here is that um, OT IT um, um, convergence, um, if it's not thought from start as a security continuum, um, um, uh, bears very big holes in its middle. Okay, industry for the whole. Um, that is um, basically the new industrial paradigms that uh, we uh, most of us work on. Okay, uh, those days and that uh, base itself on ITOT convergence uh, needs a couple of elements, a number of elements, if it wants to uh, succeed, if it wants to uh, to be um, uh, sustainable. Okay, um, just out of my mind, a couple of points here that I want to share with you, uh, and some of them I believe we at the Orca are already uh, well advanced in, in, into trying to supply and, 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 and to offer to a number of industrial players. But let's start one by one. Um, as I mentioned, security needs a holistic approach, okay? IT has been thought, has been designed as a silo with a security design and same for OT. So just um, um, adding OT and IT, so you just can count on uh, uh, having those two add-ons uh, plug one to the other, you need a holistic security approach. And when I say holistic security, you have to go, uh, in, a, in, in, my, in my words, okay, up to the last mile, okay? Any security approach that doesn't consider um, all the chain down to the machine, okay, is missing a very important point. Okay, that's the first point, I think. Uh, the second point is that, uh, you cannot just rely on generic or horizontal um, security threat detection techniques. Okay, you know, like think about SOCs, security operation centers. More and more people are adopting those, those things, which are very, very important, I think, for any industrial players. But unless those generic horizontal um, um, approach or solutions 
unless they are complemented by more um, vertical domain specific expertise and maybe tailor-made solutions, unless you do that, you won't fix all the problems that you have uh, with uh, OT and, uh, and, and IT convergence, okay? The third, the third aspect here is very important as well. I think uh, uh, the renewability of security is a critical one. Uh, in, uh, in the world of security, it's not a matter of when, sorry, it's a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Uh, any system at some point undergo security breach, any system at some point need to, uh, to, to deal with security problems. So it's a matter of when you're gonna be hacked, okay? And when that happens, you need to think renewability. And this is something you need to think from the beginning, okay? So how do you um, uh, deploy uh, patches? How do you renew corrupted components in the systems? And that has to be done from the beginning, okay? So um, doing that in an OT world where the life expectancy of equipment is, uh, I mentioned 15, 20 years, is not definitely not the same, uh, the, 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 the same as doing that in an IT world where those guys are, are um, 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 you know, they're 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 used to um, you know deploying patch easily on, on the systems. Okay. The third point, the, sorry, the fourth point, deal with what we call security by design. The IT world, um, I think, has achieved a pretty good level of mastery of the concept of security by design, which is when that when we design the system right from the beginning, straight from the beginning, you already invest, you ingest their whole the security requirements. Okay. Um, I don't see the OT world as reached the same level of maturity into applying the security by design recipes, but that will have to happen at some point. And um, last but not least, <clears throat> data traceability. Um, the industry for the tool in the context of uh, IT, OT uh, uh, convergence will need to apply some data traceability, not only who produces the data, which element of the system produces the data, but as well, who consumes the data, okay? Because unless you know who has access to and who consumes the data that is being produced, unless you know that, um, uh, uh, there is no way you can ensure um, that, uh, you know, your IP is secure or uh, track back any malfunction to, um, to the very uh, 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 incidents that produce them, okay? So that is pretty much it in terms of uh, what I had to share with you today. Um, if uh, my presentation uh, uh, would have helped um, raise uh, the, in the awareness of uh, uh, the potential problem, the potential security holes that, uh, that the IT, OT security conversions in the, in the context of industry for the poor bears, I think it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't have been uh, useless. So, um, again, I'm very sorry I cannot uh, meet you uh, face to face and uh, share with you. Yeah, there was a very uh, um, um, uh, interesting, it seems like a very interesting program and participants. Uh, I'm looking forward to meet you uh, physically in yet another occasion, um, uh, maybe next year, smart manufacturing world. Thank you very much. So I'm, I don't know uh, if you can take questions, how much time we have. Thanks, Elaine. Very yep. interesting presentation. It's a huge topic. And I guess there's always a tension between the security because you could, well, let's, let's say you could spend an infinite amount on security, but equally, the more, the more security you put in place, the harder it is to do business. So how, how do you encourage a healthy tension to exist within the business so that, um, so that you end up with a pragmatic way forward. Yeah. So, um, you know, security, uh, is, is, you know, it's not that you, you, you take a case, you know, you take a box and that's it, you know. Uh, it, it, it's also an iterative process. You know, at some point there is a, when you design a system, there is always a trade-off. Um, um, what it is that you want to achieve, what are the risks that you're, that, that you allow yourself to take, you know, because you cannot have 100% uh, security. So you have to do this trade off and you have to manage that dynamically, okay, iteratively, dynamically. So that's where 
um, the uh, the renewability and the the countermeasure that that you um, already built into the systems come into uh, in, in, into action. You know? it, it's 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 iterative. As I said, um, you cannot cover everything. You have to from right from scratch to you know it's it's a process. Huh? It's a very uh, well known process uh, 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 that that you have to apply. You know when you design a system, you just um, make sure that. Uh, the stakeholders know what risk they are ready to take, and then you manage that over time. Okay, uh, when you face with uh, uh, so so, I mean, there is a there is what you implement in terms of security, uh, um, um, you know, techniques or modules in your system. But there's also how you monitor the security of the models that you can in parallel. Okay, because monitoring is not that important. Okay, um, how do you react to that? That is that deal with policy and all that. You have to learn. Have and, uh, and 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 make evolve over time. You know, um, um, you know our system itself, security systems. They reflect this history of uh, hacking and piracy and counter hacking and blah 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 blah. You know, so that's a cat and mouse, and you have to learn. But you have to allow sufficient uh, um, flexibility or sufficient to, uh, in your system to to allow for this renewability, and you have to make sure that the awareness is there. You know, that's what you need. Okay. Another question, please. Yeah. Ah. Uh -huh. Thanks. So if it's any other question, please. Thank you very much, Alan. Can you hear okay. me? Ah, okay, thanks. So thank you and we will continue. Thank you very much. Thanks.